Well, today I am going to do some paper cuts. And um, I wanna tell you a little bit about this. Really, you've got all the supplies you need for this right at hand. I'm certain you do. So I um, wanna show you, this is a very old one I made. And every time I go to use it, I get all proprietary and I don't wanna <laughs> use it because I like it. But this is off of a stencil. I think this is maybe a Susie Dennis stencil. And I like this stencil very, very much. It, it kind of, I, I don't know if it really says anything or not, but it looks like it would say something. And I like the idea of making a paper cut from it. So here is one that I made. I couldn't even tell you what part I was using. I don't see it offhand, who knows? Doesn't matter is the thing. But anyway, so but, this is just more about the whole making of parts and different ways to use your stencils. So this is um, just a piece of painted paper that I cut from this particular stencil. All right, last night, I made this little suitcase and from the stencil by Mary Nasser. And I mean, look at this little thing. It's so cute. So here, you know, you can have these in your stash and then I could go ahead and put it in my journal page. I could put it over here, put a background. And I really think it's a fun way to do something different with your stencils. This is one I started using um, the stencil of Michelle Ward's. This is an old calendar page. So I was getting ready to throw it away and I thought, oh, I don't know, that's really pretty nice, right? So I thought, of course it wasn't big enough to fit the whole thing on there, but I traced it and I'm gonna cut this out. I'm gonna show you this in a minute. But let me talk a little bit about what makes a good stencil to make a, um, you know, a paper cut. For me, what makes a good one is one that's easy to cut because I am not known for precision work. I'll just say it right now. And what I normally do, like with this one, is I lay it down and I trace around it with a pencil. And then if there were any bridges or anything that I wanted to get rid of, I would make some adjustments to it. This one was pretty much good to go. And this is one of these ones where the, the paper cut is gonna look just like this stencil, like that one of Susie Dennis's, okay? And you know, it looks just like the piece of Mylar and this is gonna look just like the piece of Mylar. So first I would trace it and then I would just go along with my knife and I'm just using a craft knife and I would cut. Here is the thing about doing these paper cuts is you can alter the stencils and you know, you can change the design. You can omit parts, you can add parts. You could, I mean, this is the way to make it um, really kind of interesting or change it. I like to just kind of move the paper like that. I have it stabbed in my craft mat and that makes it really easy to do. I'm not following the lines because <laughs> I'm trying to, but then it's getting loose. It's getting loose. So, um, to have a good sharp knife is always good. This paper is a little thicker than some. Now, actually that looks kind of cool, right? <laughs> right there. So you can do as much or as little as you want. I mean, you could even stop right here if you wanted. Um, Here's an idea. Okay, first of all, I got a little messy here. So I'm gonna clean this up with tiny scissors. They're gonna be quite helpful for this process. There's my tiny scissors. Okay, now look at the stencil. I think it would be cool to have this part still be solid. So I'm gonna leave that part solid. I'm not gonna cut it out like on the stencil itself, so I'm only gonna cut out this part. Uh, 
I just bought this new craft mat, by the way. This um, Jerry's Artorama is the brand's creative mark. And oh my gosh, were they some good deals. I got one for home and one for the studio. I just like these little ones because you can just, I mean, okay. You know we all just work in a little space anyway, so you don't need a big craft mat. We're all working right here, so I just bought two of them. I think they were like, I don't know, $5 each, or they were really inexpensive was the bottom line. Let's see if I can get this out of here. This is a little thicker paper. So you would just keep going as such, cutting. And then when you're done, you can do, you know, whatever you want with it from there. I as I said, like to put them in my journal pages, you know, you can kind of, well, that page wouldn't work with that one, nor would that page, but you've got tons of options. Now, this is a really ugly page, so this needs some more work, but I often will do this. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to leave that right there to work on it later for that page. This came in a pack of collage pages that I was gifted by a very special person and I thought this would be a cool one. Now, this stencil is so intricate, you're probably like, holy moly, what would you do? So here's what I would do first if I was doing a stencil this intricate. I'd flip it over first of all and just trace the outside on the back. So what I would start to do is I would just go around the edges. I'm gonna just do the tail, give you an idea how this one would start. And then I would probably just, okay. So like that, so there's the tail. And then I would connect, connect the dots, so to speak. And I would finish tracing the rest of the fish and just cut it out. And then I would deal with the smaller parts. And it, this is one where I would take a lot of, um, a lot of license with changing it. Because, I mean, these little parts are gonna be insane to cut out. It would be just gorgeous if you did every other one, every other section or something. Um, I mean, you could do whatever you want with it. But I think it would be really cool, and especially with this piece of paper, I think it'd be super cool. You could even kind of orient it so you could get the eye up under this black section. It would be really cool. So that's another idea with fossil fish. And then the beetle. Okay, so I think having a beetle in my journal would be so fun. So last night, I just smeared some green paints on here, let them dry, and I took one of the beetles, I took like this little middle guy here, and I already traced him. So I'm gonna show you how I would start this guy. I'm gonna just cut out a section of the paper. I'm first gonna start in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold this up. See how these legs are like free, free floating? I'm gonna just pretend that the legs are all connected, okay? Because obviously I don't wanna lose the legs. So I'm just gonna start cutting out my beetle and this is how I would start. Now this one, I do have the pencil lines on the front, but mainly I wanted you guys to see what we were doing and I could have done the pencil lines on the back, but everywhere where there's a gap here, I'm just gonna act like there's no gap and I'm just gonna keep cutting because I don't want the beetle to fall apart. Um, I think that this would be a really fun one to go back and put some of that glitter paint on it Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be cool to use some of that eye zinc glitter paint? You could um, get this beetle cut out and oh my gosh, I just have this, I have this vision. I think I have a blue, blue green journal page coming up in my future here. It's starting to look a little bit more like a beetle. And again, you know, he's got like little claws, but 
I don't know that I'm going to do the detail of the little claws, so to speak, but we will see. Now, this guy, you got options. Like, for sure, I would cut out that triangle, and I think I would just cut out some of these parts and leave some bigger beetle <laughs> beetle backs <laughs> or something. I don't even know what you call them. I know nothing about beetles. So like, I don't want to have to put my head in the, um, the screen here. I, but the main thing is, is you don't want to do all this work and have it fall apart. And how do I know that? <clears throat> yeah, well, because I've done that before, people. So just stop and think and don't get too wild about it, right? Don't get too wild. Because otherwise it will fall apart. So there is one section of it coming out there. And I'll probably do the same on the other side. You can do this to the edges of your journal pages. So you've got um, like this one. Like I could just cut along these edges or I could put a specific stencil down and trace it and do the edges. Gwen has been doing that in a lot of her journals lately and it's a beautiful look. So, I mean, you could cut out this whole section here and pop up, oh, that might be interesting. Why? Let's just do it. Let's just bust out and do it. By God. Oh, now do I want that whole section? Or I could do these little sections. Hmm. So there's just so many options. It's my greatest wish with the stencils that people learn to use them as tools and you think of all these creative things you can do with them. Okay, so look at that. Isn't that cool? So now when I work on this page, you know what I could do? Oh, here's an idea. I could just put that there on the underneath page, glue it down. And it actually kind of, oh, wow, look at that. That looks good. That was kind of meant to be, isn't it? So look at that there, and then you take it back, and I think what I wanna do is enhance this with darken this edge. But see how one thing leads to another, and it's all because I started cutting out a little beetle. <laughs> 